Glass slabs held together by metal frames, big screens, multiple cameras, smartphone design has hit a rut. Well, that's until we got a glimpse at the foldables. From a new twist on the age-old form factor to phones that expand into tablets, foldables have redefined the smartphone industry. So as we celebrate the launch of the second generation Galaxy Fold 2, I decided to take a look back at history and share some of the game changes in the mobile space. Hey guys, Amartya here from C4 eTech and if you do end up enjoying this video, then please consider subscribing and turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get started. The word smartphone didn't exist before the iPhone launched. Yes, there were phones that connected to the internet. Yes, there were phones that played back media. And yes, we did have some apps here and there baked in with the operating system. But there wasn't a phone that did it all and did it all at once. When the late Steve Jobs announced the iPhone, it was a paradigm shift. A new breed of telecommunication devices were born. The first iPhone isn't much to look at by today's standards, but it was the moon landing in the smartphone world. I'm not going to delve into the specs in this video because it's irrelevant by today's standards. What I want to focus on is the innovation. With the iPhone came the era of touchscreen smartphones, bigger than the screens that were present at that point in time. A sleek design, a vibrant screen, and smart capabilities provided the perfect canvas for an entire ecosystem of apps that to this day is a juggernaut industry that seems to be on a bullish trajectory. Let's move on to another bright spot on the timeline and talk about the BlackBerry. BlackBerry was a company device that was aimed at the corporate man, the power user who needed communication in the palm of his hand emails, instant messaging, phone calls and text. It may not seem like much today, but back then, everyone wanted a BlackBerry. The company was very big on security, so a lot of Fortune 500 companies had a mandatory BlackBerry policy for all their top-level executives. The BlackBerry Messenger is still being used on Android and iOS via an app, despite the fact that BlackBerry OS died a long time ago. They also had an at the rate BlackBerry email address for every BlackBerry user. That was all the rage back then. Apart from these features, BlackBerry was best known for its QWERTY keyboard that a lot of brands, including Nokia and Motorola, adopted. It was truly one of the best-selling smartphones in its prime. Nokia has had untold success in the past. It also had a lot of marquee products. The Nokia 1100 and 3310 are legendary products and are still fondly remembered today. But those are not why Nokia appears on this list. Let's talk about the N-Gage. It was a really different looking phone. It had one of those more polarizing designs. People either hated it or loved it. There was no middle ground. Engage was also the pioneer for what we call gaming phones today. The Engage had a screen in the middle with the keyboard to one side, a gamepad and other buttons to the left. You had to hold the phone a certain way to talk to someone on it. It also had a slot to put in what Nokia called game cards. Similar idea to what Nintendo had its cartridges for products like the Super Nintendo. We move from one Nokia to another, this time let's talk about the Nokia 6600, another very different looking phone. It ran on something called the Symbian OS. It's not as fully featured as something like Android or iOS, in fact it didn't even have a Wi-Fi antenna, but it had a huge screen by screen standards back then. It had a joystick for navigation with a click built into it and cost a pretty penny back then when 1 lakh rupee phones were unheard of. It had a serviceable 0.3 megapixel camera. This isn't a knock against the Nokia 6600. It was one of their salient features and it really was a stunning product with great durability, a refreshingly different design with a good camera and a big screen. One final Nokia product on this list is a Nokia 3650. This was a device built around media consumption. It had expandable storage that could hold videos and pictures. The screen was large for its time and it afforded a great media watching experience back in the day. It also ran on the Symbian OS, a 0.3 megapixel camera and a 850 mAh battery that enabled you to watch videos on it for a long time between charges. It may seem like a paltry gimmick to most of us now, but back in the day, it was the bee's knees. 
It had a large screen and a circular keypad with four-way navigation. I miss the old Nokia designs. What do you guys think? Please let us know in the comments below if you are old enough to have known about these crazy Nokia phones. Flip phones are trying to make a comeback today, but it's a trodden path. A path that was pioneered by Motorola with its Moto Razr. This is another pivotal moment on the smartphone timeline. It was a sleek, super sexy looking device that had a screen and a keyboard separated by a foldable hinge. It was a smashing success because people that don't like Nokia's offering gravitated towards the industrial and hip design of the Motorola Razr. It came with a 2.2 inch screen, rather sharp looking screen in fact, and a keyboard that looked like it was made out of metal. Open or shut, this phone was eye candy and it sold in massive quantities. It may not be the first of its kind, but it's the one that got it right. In an age where we are looking at foldable screens, let us not forget the Moto Razr and its contribution to the smartphone pedigree. Any of you guys remember the O2 PDA? O2 PDA was so ahead of its time that it still blows my mind. It's one of the first phones to use a stylus, a resistive stylus. It ran on a modified version of Windows called Windows 2003 Pocket PC Edition. Can you imagine a near perfect version of Windows running on a phone that didn't even have Wi-Fi way back in 2013? That's groundbreaking. But it was in no ways a perfect phone. It was huge, heavy and abysmally slow. Slow even for the time. It could connect to the internet via mobile data and you could browse the internet on a WAP browser. This along with the initial iPhone could be considered as the forefather of smartphones. Let's talk about something else with a stylus. A more recent phone. Well, recent-ish. Samsung's Galaxy Note 1. This phone holds a special place in my heart as this channel's first review was one of the Samsung Galaxy Note. Apart from being of sentimental significance, it was also the founding father of the phablet phones. When iPhones and other brands made phones with smaller screens, Samsung innovated with a rather large 5.3 inch screen phone that had all the bells and whistles that a power user would ever need. A large battery that was user removable, a crisp display, expandable storage and a stylus. I know that other phones have tried it before, but none had done it quite as well as Samsung with its Note lineup. It was so refreshing and different and so very large for its time that it was an instant hit and it continues to do well to this very day. There are other such phones that push the envelope and innovated without reservations. So would you guys like to see a video on those phones? If you would, give me a hell yeah in the comments. On that note, as always, like, share, subscribe and oh, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching till the end guys. Have a good one. Cheers.